Hello and welcome to my channel Social Research. Today I will talk about observation as a data collection method. After talking briefly about its different types, I will talk a little more about participant observation uh, with reference to ethnographic inquiry. However, before we proceed further, uh, please have a look in the words you see in this slide. What are these words or I should say the verbs that you see and what it means for you as an observer? These are the key questions that not only defines what you are going to do, but also why you are going to do this. For example, in observation, you see, hear, observe and experience. And it helps you to learn and know about something you do not know. And that what you learn or know in this way is also your data. Anyhow, it also depends on your research objectives uh, and to the extent, uh, to what extent you want to use observation as a data collection method. If you will remember these words, it will be easy for you to understand observation and it, it, its different types. So, let us begin. Generally speaking, there are two major types of observation and that is indirect observation and direct observation. Indirect observation is more about non-reactive or unobtrusive observation where observer does not directly interact or interfere with the subjects under observation. For example, standing at a traffic signal and watching traffic regulations being followed or watching a documentary may also be an indirect observation if you tend to do so. The other major types uh, is direct observation and that can be divided in two types. Direct observation without intervention and direct observation with intervention. Naturalistic observation is an observation of the behavior in the real world that is without interfering or without influencing the natural setting of the behavior. Naturalistic observation has a clear research objective and a precise objective. For example, observing animal behaviors in certain natural conditions or observing uh, because you find it difficult to understand their behavior in lab settings uh, that is more structured or more controlled observation. So you observe them in their natural conditions. Similarly, observing students in their classroom is a naturalistic observation because you are not recreating any classroom setting to engage student under observation. Another type that is observation with intervention, it includes structured observation and participant observation. Structured observation, as I just mentioned, is a controlled observation where observer can use predefined or predetermined markers to recreate the environment or setting where the observer is interested, interested to observe the behavior. And its example is uh, the work of developmental psychologist. I mean, how the developmental psychologist uh, take interest in observing children uh, or children behavior at different stages using structured observational settings. Now, before I talk about participant observation, let us see what is non-participant observation. Non-participant observation, as the name itself suggests, uh, there is no interference or interaction by the researcher is involved in it. So to say, it is a fly on the wall observation. That means go to the specific location and observe what is happening. For example, observing customers in a shopping mall. Non-participant observation may be overt or covert. Overt observation means that people know who is the observer. And even then, there would be no interaction or interference involved in it. For example, joining an organizational meeting as a researcher, where obviously people know you are not one of them and that you are there to observe the meeting proceedings. On the other hand, 
covert observation means hidden or invisible so the people do not know that they are being observed and as 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 i said uh, observing in a shopping mall well uh, it must be in your knowledge that people may change their behavior when they know they are being observed however there are several other techniques to handle these issues uh, that I, I will talk in some other presentation so non participant observation in a sense is a passive participation because um, uh, anyhow researcher is at the location of the observation having a direct observation okay now participant observation participant observation is an important data collection tool for social and cultural anthropologists it helps to understand the context and later contextually validating the research findings accordingly participant observation provides learning about participants cultural life in their natural setting and it also provides a guide to conduct interviews and discussions participant observation helps the researcher to provide a thick and rich description of the phenomena and the behavior while people may be different in what they say and what they do participant observation with longer time durations is helpful to understand the contextual meanings of human behavior it also helps to understand what is happening and why is it happening that way however there are several challenges that require intensive training and sufficient skills before going to the field these challenges are related to the contextual sensitivity and complexity that a researcher may face in the field for example language barriers gender boundaries norms values and social sanctions are crucial aspects of the social and cultural context of the people uh, and they should not be compromised at all a participant observer may be native the insider or a non native the outsider observer a native researcher uh, though overcome several cultural barriers but the native researcher is too close to the data that there is a chance to perceive things as taken for granted therefore it is always a need to learn how to maintain a distance uh and that is another topic i will talk in another presentation whereas a non native researcher who is an absolute outsider have an advantage to see things from a distance without predetermined or taken for granted assumptions however there are serious challenges related to the cultural familiarity and language barriers that may distort the meaning making process for the researcher anyhow again there are other ways and methodological strategies that are used to handle this challenge here i must mention one thing that as human we are never neutral so even a non native researcher has his social cultural and political characteristics uh with him or with her and that means that he or she is not without biases that may interfere with some at some stage of the data collection process another type of participant observation may be or or the participant observer may be the one who is native and non native in different ways for example when i was doing ethnographic inquiry in a village in south punjab i had a bunch of resources as native punjabi that helped me to understand language barriers gender and social sanctions on the other hand i lived and brought up in a big city in punjab that makes me a non native to the traditional rural context hence i was in a position uh to position myself in at distant and too close simultaneously however this was challenging uh, that when and how to shift your position i wrote an article about it with detailed information and you can find the article link Uh, in the video description so for a researcher enjoying both insider and outsider positions means to be skilled in negotiating the two positions or so to say the two identities in a way to get best of participant observation 
Well, uh, in the end, it is good if we can understand the extent to which the participant observers engage themselves in observation. And uh, it depends on the search objectives, data collection approach, and the researcher's epistemological and methodological positions. So, a participant observer may be a passive participant. And that is, there will be no interference and no interaction. And a participant observer may be, uh, may be doing a moderate participation. And that means restricting the total immersion of going native in the field and being an observer who is interactive enough to engage people in discussion or in friendly communications. Then uh, we will decrease the distance more and then there is an active participation. An active participation means to go native, to be one of them, to, will, to, to live with them for a longer period of time and trying to uh, live as they live. And uh, then finally there is a complete participation and that is a researcher who is actually one of them, a native researcher. So you see, the level of participation varies and sometimes researchers find themselves in more than one level of participation during uh, the observation period. And uh, again, it is about what, why and how you are researching. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this, this was just a brief introduction to different types of observation. Uh, and it is basically to help you what sort of observation you are doing or what sort of observation uh, you are in, you intend to do. So thank you for watching. See you soon with another interesting video. Best wishes. <laughs>